Okay, good afternoon to all of you. We are uh, we'll be discussing the topic for today, which is the how to use the MATLAB classification learner app. Uh, last time, uh, the topic is about Mendeley. Mendeley software. I have seen some of the videos that you have uploaded in your YouTube channel. Probing, that is a proof that you already knew how to use Mendeley. Because you have uploaded the video. You know how to download articles from the inter research articles, published research article. You know how to use Mendeley. I think you you can write. You can write uh, your. You can start writing your paper. Once you knew this. Uh, the task that we will be discussing today. Once you knew the skills that you will learn today. So before we go to the our main topic, let's have a review about the last topic, which is Mendeley. So Mr. Abano, Ian Joshua, can you give me an example uh, advantage? Can you give me an advantage of the Mendeley software? Ano po sir, automatic po siyang nasa site tsaka mag-insert ng bibliograph. Oh, that's one advantage. And I'm speaking in English. I think you need to speak in English also. It's just practice. Even though we are not really that good in speaking English, at least we tried in doing so because you are already a college student. And you will be speaking English in the workplace. So uh, let's practice it. So what Ian Joshua said is is uh, correct. That's one advantage of using Mendeley. How about Amira May Romilia? Can you give me another advantage of Mendeley? Um, one advantage is yung kapag magsusulit ka po ng bibliography tapos mahaba po yung reference mo. Okay, uh, inserting the bibliography. That was already mentioned by Ian Joshua. What are, can you give me some besides what is mentioned already? Um, I think so. An advantage with the um, art, many types of uh, reference type for like the okay. ID. That's correct. Uh, reference format. That's one advantage also. What what Miss Amira May is saying is you can change from one format to another. For example, you pass in a journal where in the format is IEEE and it is rejected. And you need to pass it again to another journal, which the format is APA. So you just change the formatting in the Mendeley and it will automatically change. So another that's another advantage of Mendeley. Nicoleo, 
Ako yun doon. Yung sa ano po? Yung accurate po yung may lalagay na citation based po doon sa pinagkuhanan mo nung sa sinite mo na ano, word or phrase po. What do you mean accurate? Kasi po minsan po nagkakamali po ng kuha kung saan po nalilito po kung saan po kinuha yung pagsasite po. So by the use of Mendeley po mas tama po yung citation na magagalap doon sa paglalagay po doon sa paper. Okay. Medyo accurate. Can you expound that, Miss Pamela May Rico? Can you expound what uh, Nicoleo is saying? He said, uh, accurate. We can edit the, the articles from Mendeley so it will. Ka ano po? Automatic pong na... Yung mga details po ng, ano, ng article, automatic po siyang magsa-cite po once po na nag-insert po tayo ng citation. Okay, uh, that's correct. The details can be edited. That's correct. The details can be edited. That's an advantage. If it is a conference proceeding, you can declare it as a conference proceeding. Uh, you can change the wrong entry in the details. Some articles, when you download it, the it, details are already correct, but there are but there are articles that need to be edited in terms of their details. Another one. MJ Belga. Uh, okay. Ano po? Can can use offline. Yes, uh, you can use it offline. That's correct. Can can we use Mendeley offline? Correct. Is, the, is, is that observation correct, Mr. Larry Simon? Can you use Mendeley offline? Um, ano po? Yes po, sir. Depende po siya, sir, kung yung mga, kung may naka, I mean, may mga naka-download na pong files dun sa Mendeley niyo po. At yung mga naka-download na po na files dun, yung mga pwede nyo pong gamitin sa paper nyo po. Okay. That's Larry Simon. Uh, Ron Joseph, can you give me another advantage of Mendeley? Sir, yung advantages po ng Mendeley, which is para po sa akin, if I'm not familiar po kasi sa Mendeley po and when yung nung una ko po siyang tinry is sobrang dali niya lang po matutunan. Tsaka po yung Mendeley po is pwede rin po siya sa mga pwede, sobrang available po siya sa Chrome and pwede rin po siyang mobile application po. Okay. Pwede mobile application. It's correct. Uh, Kyle, Trisha, what are the advantages that you have observed in using Mendeley? Um, it's easier to find the documents as long as it add, it's added in the Mendeley app based on um, author or any other filter. Because may filter po sa, sa Mendeley desktop app. Okay. Uh, that's a good observation. When you need to cite topic and cite 
on this topic. For example, copy, you just uh, <coughs> you just search copy in the Mendeley, and all the articles about copy will be will be displayed. That's correct. Uh, that's Kyle Trisha. How about Mariel? Is Mariel or Mariel? Any other advantage? Is Miss Dalagi? Are you here? Can you give me an advantage of using Mendeley? Uh, it automatically automatically insert what article you added. Ah, uh, that's is mentioned already. What are other advantages? That... Mm. Yung, ah, correct, uh, yung correct way you of using format. Kasi po, sir, pa, yung iba po, ni po kasi namin alam masyado yung ibang format ng, yung format nung pag-add gawa nung mga reference, katulad po ng APA. Marami po kasi siyang set of rules na kailangan sundin. So, pag sa gabit po ng Mendeley, hindi na po namin kailangan intindihin yun. Okay. That's correct. We don't need to... We don't need to study the details of the formatting because the Mendeley does it for you. It is APA, IEEE, how it is arranged. Uh... You just ignore the that arrangement because it's already done by Mendeley for you. As long as it is uh, APA, IEEE, we just we just assume that uh, it is the right format. We are sure that it's the right format because it is done in Mendeley. And also, because uh, different journals have different format, you just click what is what format is needed for that journal, and you are good to go. Okay, we are done with the advantages. What about the disadvantages? Mr. Dibanza. Are there any disadvantages of a Mendeley? It sometimes goes in active and disappear as well, sir. Come again. The uh, plugin sometimes disappears in MS Word. Okay. Uh, that's uh that's uh, definitely a disadvantage. Sometimes it disappears. If you are not using it for a long time, it will deactivate itself. And you need to add it again in MS Word. So it's free. But there is also a commercial version of it. But the pre version is good enough good enough for writing a paper any other disadvantage any other disadvantage Sometimes, uh, you... Vince Gallardo. Okay. 
being so tolerado. Think, what, uh, uh, one of the disadvantages of mental software is sometimes po, uh, if not properly downloaded the uh, PDF, nagkakamali po yung lagay ni Mendeley and i-edit na lang po natin yun. Okay. Uh, some journals, are, the details are that are not correct. Especially in there are journals that are when you download it, the entries in the details are are not correct. <laughs> so Mendeley cannot did not know how to download the correct details. If it is downloaded uh, wrongfully, it cannot uh, rearrange or cannot uh, enter the right details automatically. The user needs to edit it manually. So it's one disadvantage of Mendeley. Any other disadvantage of Mendeley? So that's being Gallardo. Any other disadvantage? But all in all, the advantages outdo the disadvantages. Journal writing, paper writing, and publishing a paper is fun because of the Mendeley software. Some people, some students, some faculty members do not want to write research articles or research paper because, because of this. It uh, becomes, becomes a hindrance, the citing becomes a hindrance, becomes an obstacle in writing a paper. And that obstacle or that gap in that difficulty in writing in the paper is solved by using Mendeley. As mentioned earlier in the earlier session, another advantage of Mendeley is the, the pre version is limited to two gigabytes. The article that you can can download is two gigabytes, only limited to two gigabytes. Now, it is uh, because many people have evaluated the software. It is now also available in the commercial version. The pre version, there is a pre version, and there is also a commercial version. So we go to the next topic. Our next topic is about MATLAB classification learner. Can I share this video? This video, you can access it in my YouTube channel. It's already there. There are two videos about MATLAB classification learner app. One is this one, how to use MATLAB classification learner app. The difference between the two. Uh, just find this in my YouTube channel, how to use the MATLAB classification learner app. The difference between the two videos is this video use an original data set. Original means I made the data set myself. And the other one, the data set that's, that is being used is the Irish data set or data set available in the internet. 
So in writing the paper, it, you can also write a paper using other people's data set. Also, you can use you can use uh, your own data set. So in this video, I use an original data set. So this is just a walkthrough through to the video. Walk through the video, but you need to watch it by yourself. I just introduce the video. Step one, you must have a data set that you intend to classify. So this, the paper that you will write here is about classification. The paper that you can write here is about classification. For example, you need to classify the different species of coffee in terms of their beans. That's one paper. You want to classify the different species of coffee in Cavite using their leaves. That's also possible. The data set can be about color, color of their leaves, color of their beans. That data set can be about the texture, the beans texture of the, the leaves. Also the morphological or the measurements of the beans of the leaves that is also possible. Or you can use an instrument and Based on the reading from that instrument, that is also, you can classify based on the reading of this, the, that experiment, that based on the reading of that instrument. For example, in this video, I classify two types of copy, the Cibet copy and the non-Cibet copy. The Cibet copy, The Cibet copy is the copy eaten by the Cibet cat, cat or the what we call alamid. Who among you knew alamid? If you are from the barrio, uh, you knew alamid. It's a. Uh, it looks like a cat. And Cibet cat. It's also uh, for me. It's look like a, a raccoon. When these uh, animals or this eat the coffee beans, the ripe coffee beans, and they defecate it, it is called a Cibet cat. According according to some coffee drinkers, it is the most delicious type of coffee. The gastric juice of the Cibet in their digestive system create a different flavor for this coffee. The disadvantage of Cibet cat because the farmer, uh, at first, the Cibet cat copy the cibet copy you gather it from the wild but the greediness of the farmer human nature greediness of human greediness for money instead of picking cibet cat from the from the forest they catch they catch the cibet cat and raise it as a pet and offer it ripe coffee beans. The result is because the, these farmers are only feeding the cibet cat with coffee, force feeding, force, you are forcing them to eat coffee. You are not offering them any food, any fruits or vegetables, just coffee. This, uh, 
this event get after a few years died because uh, imagine eating only coffee all the days of your life. So their the digestive system becomes damaged. So that is what I am intending to classify in my paper that here in this video. Using a near infrared spectroscopy, this is an instrument. This is an instrument that gather the frequency when this instrument is uh, there is a frequency near infrared frequency when it passes through when it passes through a certain object this nirs instrument generates a reading so i use that to measure what is being read in a cbet copy and what is being read in a normal copy so this that is uh it is written in a paper and this that this is how I did it. Okay, uh, step one, you must have a data set that you intend to classify. So again, uh, there are data set available in the internet. It's up to you uh, which data set you will you will choose. But my, but my, but my advice is to choose uh, quickly because some of your classmates or some of other students from other section will will do a paper on that data set. So first come, first serve. But there are thousands available in the internet. But uh, pick the the uh, the good data set, and make sure also that that data set is not subjected to MATLAB classification learner app. It is not the result is not published. Make sure that you are the first one who will subject that data set in the MATLAB classification learner app. But don't worry because the MATLAB classification learner app has just has had just been released just recently a few years back and nobody is using this in making a paper i have made a few a few paper using matlab classification learner app I have published <coughs> already a few <coughs> but aside from me uh, and a few authors, uh, none is using this. So take advantage of, of the timing of your paper. So we go to step two. So this paper, the process is, I have done the the process here in this article, this published article. So just watch this again. Step two, use the MATLAB classification learner app to classify the data set. So you can see here that there are so many apps of MATLAB, but we will only be using the classification learner. So there are apps for computer engineering, for electrical engineering, for, for electronics engineering. So for this subject, we'll utilize the MATLAB classification learner app. So it's very easy to use. 
with less than 30 minutes, you can have your results. And you can have your paper. So you can see here the inputs. and the response. The cross validation, five folds. It's the number, total number of samples divided by five. For example, if you have a sample of 20, uh, 100, you divide it by five. So yeah. that means you have 80 test samples, training samples and 20, 20 test samples. In terms of data set, the larger the number of samples, uh, the most likely your paper will be accepted in a journal. So it has now become a factor. For a thesis paper, thesis manuscript, the minimum number of samples is 1,000. But for just a basic research paper, the minimum, num minimum number of samples per, per class is 60. So you need to find a data set which is a minimum number of samples 60 per class. So we say per class, 60 samples for COP, for Arabica, 60 samples for Liberica, for Excelsa, 60 samples for Robusta. So search for that kind of data set. So cross validation is five. Again, it is dividing your total number of samples per class by five. 80 will become training and 20 will become testing. Training, as the name suggests, training. You are training your machine. That these 80 samples uh, contain the parameters, the characteristics of Liberica. And when you subject the 20 test samples in the computer, in the same machine, the, those 20 samples can be identified by the computer because of the 80 samples that you use as the training. So 80 test samples, 20, 80 training samples, 20 test samples. For example, you are 16 students in the on this class. The validation polls that I use is four. 16 divided by four is four. So I use 12 training samples and four testing samples. This is just an example. So I'll use uh, the 12 students to determine so that I can identify whether you are CPE32. I'll just test my algorithm on, the, on those 12. But when I subject those remaining four into my classification classifier, my classifier can identify that those four test samples are from CPE32. So that's how you do it. But as I said earlier, your minimum sample per class should be 60. So go find a data set that is like that. So these are the results of the classifier. We can see here that there are there are 23 classifiers in MATLAB classification learner app. 
and the highest classifier is the cubic SBM. These are the results. So you copy paste the scatter plot. You need this for making your paper long. So that's the result. So that's how we use the the MATLAB classification learner app. That's a video number one. The video length is forty-three minutes. Just uh, less than thirty minutes, you can have your own paper. Uh, the purpose is for you to develop research culture. If you have a success in publishing an article, you will acquire the research culture. And that is my job, to promote the research culture in the college as the college research coordinator, especially in the Department of Computer and Electronics Engineering. I want all my students to have the so-called research culture. So because this is a required, this is a requirement to publish a paper, it's a do or die situation for you. Publish or perish. You are in that kind of situation right now. I hope you realize it. The earlier you realize it, the more you will value your time, how you will use your time. Uh, because already one month have passed, four months left for publishing a research paper. And there are so many other things to do in this subject. Research paper, number one, number one requirement, research paper, publish. The second one is to, to have a research title. Before the end of the semester, you'll depend a research title. So that's video number one. Do you have any question? Are you still there? Any question? Q and A portion. Sir, tanong ko lang po dun sa part na may sa may cross fold po sa ano MATLAB. Paano po namin ma-determine yung tamang quantity or tamang number po, po para sa data na makukuha namin? Uh, limit, uh, most likely, uh, the, the five uh, folds is enough. Five folds is enough because uh, it means that 80% will be the testing the training and 20% will be testing. So your question, how many samples will you use? Is that right? Uh, the minimum is 60, but the, the higher number, 60 per class. If there are three classes, 60, 60, 60, that's 180 samples. That's the minimum accepted by the scientific community. But uh, the scientific community, the journal has now been matured. If, there, if that is a matured journal, not a new journal, 60 samples per class is a very hard to publish. The more number of samples uh, 
the better. In masteral thesis, in doctoral thesis, the minimum number of samples is 1,000 samples per class. Since this is a basic research that we are, that we will do, a basic uh, a, an application research, uh, the minimum number of samples is sixty per class. And if you divide it by five five folds, it's enough. There is no standard really. But five is, is five is good. Any other question? Any other question? If you don't have a question right now and you you think of a question later, you just uh, write it in the group chat, in our messenger group chat. Ask question there so that other people, other students can relate. Maybe they have the same question, so I don't need to to repeat my answer. So ask question in the group chat. Okay, let's go to the second video, which is How to use MATLAB classification learner app using the Irish data set. So basically the process is the same. The only difference is the data set that was used. So the data set is from the internet. Irish data set in Excel, just enter it in YouTube and Google. And you will have this link. So the process is just repeated here. Same process. Uh, this time, uh, Irish. Irish is a flower that has three classes. Virginica. Virginica, uh, Persicolor, and Setosa. Now, after the classification, uh, determine which which of the machine learning algorithm got the highest accuracy. If there is a tie, it is decided which one is the faster. So there is a tie between these two. So to judge which one is the best algorithm, best classifier, you choose which one is faster. Which one is the fastest? You can see the, the time here, the training time. 
accuracy, prediction speed, training time, and th then just uh, pause which one is the faster. Choose which one is the faster. So again, uh, you need to include this and explain it. The purpose is to make your paper lengthy. The minimum requirement is four pages for a paper. Less than four pages is most likely will not be accepted by that journal. The uh, scatter plot, confusion matrix, or OC curve, parallel coordinates plot. So we can see here in the parallel coordinate parallel coordinates plot that in terms of petal and petal length, the Irish date, the Irish flower are are. can be separated in terms of petal width. This is the setosa, the blue one. Virginica is the uh, orange. And versicolor, the yellow orange. We can see here that two classes are overlapping. But still, the machine learning algorithms can separate those three classes. So how they do that? It's the uh, mathematics. Uh, the, the good thing about these machine learning algorithms is you don't need to study all of them, all the 23 of them. You treat it as a black box and, uh, and just declare which one, which one is the most accurate. Unlike in statistics that you will go to lengthy computation, this one, you just upload, upload the input, and this MATLAB classification learner app will do the rest. And display, display the analysis. So that's the beauty of the MATLAB CLA. Just copy paste that in your paper and voila, you have a paper to publish. Uh, do you have any questions? Sir, yung sa nakita ko po din sa video, ano, yung sa may history po, nakalagay po din yung parang accuracy yung sa kung aling analysis po yung gagamitin. Kasabay na po ba nun na isasuggest ng MATLAB classification yung chart na gagamitin? For example po, yung sa scatter plot o kaya yung... Uh, 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 you will be the one who, uh, who will use that. But the MATLAB will generate it. Even the, the low accuracy has that type of the analysis. The scatter plot, the parallel coordinates, ROC curve. All the machine learning algorithms, whether they are low accuracy, high accuracy, they have that kind of plot. But for your paper, you will choose the highest accuracy. You will, you will be the one who will choose the highest accuracy. Because you are the author. So the purpose of your paper, one, one of the objective of your paper is to choose which one of the machine learning algorithms will generate the highest accuracy, highest classification accuracy. So if you can use this, if you can find a data set in which you can use in a 
in your thesis, that's good. I have already discussed the thematic areas of the Cavite State Universities. You can use that. This will go to the smart engineering, smart ICT. This is smart ICT because automated classification. As much as possible, uh, do the classifier in do research in cacao and coffee. In cacao and coffee. That because that is uh, the crops wherein the kabsu is want to do research. That is the area of research for Kabito State University. Cacao. Makapuno, kopi, uh, ornamental plants, orchids. But other classifier, that's also good. But you need to depend. Uh, you need to depend it in the title defense. If you choose not on those, uh, if you choose crops, not on the, not in the concern or in the circle, circle of concern of Cavite State University. Again, cacao, kopi, makapuno, taong. As much as possible, if you can find a data set on that, that's good. If there is available data set in the internet, sometimes this data set are not in the repository. You can try contacting the author of those researches. You can write them a letter. If you use the research gate channel, you can write them a letter, request for the copy of the data set. And most likely, there is a high percentage that they will give it to you. Because you are citing them. You are citing the researches. Any other question? Any other question? So this is an individual endeavor. So we make a paper individually. So we write a paper individually. Our next meeting is about how to write your face your first paper. It's on Thursday that you can access those. You can access the video already in the YouTube, in my YouTube channel. If you want to, if you want to study in advance. So even a high school student can write a paper if they follow my method, the method that I have discussed in my channel. Whatever your course is, it's not only for engineering. Whatever your course is, that is my claim in, in my video. As long as you do the MATLAB classification learner up, and it is the data set is about classification. You can write a paper. So classify. So where can you find the data set? I'll give you an example.
share. Uh, I'll give you an example. For example, uh, data set repository. So use Google, enter data set repository, and there are so many data set available here in the internet. Hundreds, thousands of them. Uh, one of those Famous repository is the UCI machine learning repository. So what uh, what type of object you want to classify? It's an abalone, if you are interested in classifying this. You can use the MATLAB classification learner app. The adult uh, anonymous Microsoft web data. Take note of the date. It's 1996, 1998. But it is also still valid. This data set is still valid. So, so this data set, uh, the data set wherein this is applicable is uh, numerical, numerical values. There are data set that is composed of features that is for deep learning, deep neural network. So you will not, you need not to choose. And pictures data set. So if you want to classify breast cancer, it's it's available here. But check also if there are other researches done already. So there are so many, so many data set. Uh, maybe you want to classify the different type of COVID variants, the UK variant, the South African variant, that is also possible. Just look for the data set containing that. ForwardScienceData.com. Some of the repositories are free, some are. You need to pay. So why buy the car when you can get the milk for free? So we settle for those free repositories. Uh, search for it. So, so many. It's up to you. But the rule is once you have found the data set that you want to classify, contact me or message me right away so that that data set will be. Will be will be assigned to you. So students from other section cannot do a paper in using that data set because you are the first one who, who contacted me first come first serve basis. I'll be the 
referee. Which one is the which one is the first student that is interested in that data set? So email me in my email address edwin.r.arboleda at cbsu.edu.ph. Email me on that on that address, email address. So I will use the timestamp. To judge which one is the first to become interested in that data set. So, any other question? So, time is uh, very important here. Utilize your time wisely. Still got four four months to publish, and the paper can be done within a week. If you if you if you are serious in in doing the paper, you can finish it in within a week. But don't pass it without consulting me. Because based on experience, I know some of the characteristics of the journal. I know how it how, how a paper is judged by that journal based on the based on who is the editor, who is the main editor of that journal. So this journal is not the same as five years ago because editors are changing. If five years ago you can publish on that journal, maybe at present time it's very hard to publish on it again because the editors have changed. So human human nature will also play a factor here. You are some are lucky, some will be lucky because they pass in, they submitted their paper in a very light review Scopus Index journal. Again, uh, you are 89 in this class. Well, there will be 89 papers that we can produce in this subject. So if you can publish your paper, your grade will become one within a SEM. If not incomplete, but you will be given one year to publish. If you can publish it with on, within those time period, you will have a grade of one also. Incomplete, then one. But take note that uh, if you are aspiring for honor, incomplete grade is not an option. There is a proposal that has been passed that those students that have an incomplete grade will not be will not be accepted in the honor roll if they have a incomplete grade. So if you are a, a, a cum laude candidate, an honor student candidate, you must have those finishing instinct. If you can finish within the time period of five months, then you are not worthy to be called an honor student. As a reminder, and I hope you will not blame me, you will not give me the blame whether you become an honor student or not, because it's all up to you. It's not up to me, but it's up to you. 
you make your own destiny. You are responsible for your own outcomes. Not me. I just laid my the criteria, and you you walk on that. Uh, you walk on the path. So, are there any question? There is none. I'll check the attendance. Dosal Christine Joy. Okay, they are here. All those that recited are present. Uh, BJ Garcia. Present, sir. Okay. Kim Wally. Present po, sir. Ano ba ito? Jolig? Yolyege po. Yolyege. Okay. Walang basa ron. Jean Ann Hennessy Gomez. Present po, sir. Okay. Magpakita naman kayo sa... Magpakita nga kayo. Kanina pa ako hindi na nakakakita. Show yourself in the screen because still this morning I can see a people in my computer screen. Uh, Sheila Ann Igaras. Okay, Sheila Ann Igaras. Pagpantay. Kyle Trisha. Okay, there, uh, all are present. So that's a good sign that you are interested in the subject. So uh, it's, it will be very challenging from this day forward. So take it very seriously. Uh, I hope yeah, you have already the MATLAB software. Plus, uh, section one, I've asked they, you already took MATLAB. Yeah, you have already used the MATLAB in the class of Mam Dison, numerical method. So you have a background. But this time you will use it in writing a paper. So it's publish or perish. Need to publish or perish. Okay. Any other question? This video is recorded. I hope the recording is uh, good so that I can upload it in the YouTube channel. You can review. There are some things that I've said here that that was not said in the previous class. So you can also view the other session, the earlier session. Again, I will make a uh, instruction for your activity number four. Uh, I'm checking this activity before, maybe not this time, but I'll definitely ch check this activity. Make sure that you pass your the activity in the right uh, email address. And I will assign another email address for this activity form. I have many email address, so I'll use it for activity form. So I will not have a hard time checking for different activities. So one email address for one activity.
Okay, any other question? If there is none, uh, let's uh, end this meeting. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you are not disappointed that we'll have something to do. This is a challenge for a college student. You are already a college student, and I think you can do it. It's up to you. The outcomes depends on you. Your greatest enemy is yourself. Not your teacher, not your classmate, but yourself. You can, yourself can, if you can make you, if your mindset is lazy, it will catch up on you later. If you have a lazy mindset, uh, will catch up on you later. It will delay, delay you in your goals. Okay. I have I hope you have a good day and see you on first day. Thank thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, sir. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Paul. Thank you.